Hey, this is Dr. Chris Kelly, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing nuclear stress testing. What it is, how it works, and what you should expect if your doctor has ordered one for you. I should start by saying that nuclear stress tests are very common. They're ordered by cardiologists and non-cardiologists alike. They can be done either in a doctor's office or in a hospital setting. And the purpose of this test is to help determine the probability that you have a blocked artery on the surface of your heart. Um, and I'm gonna talk in a minute about what that means and why we would care about that. In addition, I should point out that this test also shows your overall heart function and can sometimes be used primarily for that purpose. So let's go to the basics here. So this is a picture of your heart and the red lines on the surface of the heart are arteries. They carry blood. Now your heart is full of blood all the time. It's pumping it to your entire body, but your heart is made out of muscle and that muscle needs a blood supply of its own to function. And it gets that blood supply through these arteries called the coronary arteries. Now, uh, under normal resting circumstances, the flow through these arteries is adequate and the heart muscle is happy. But when the heart is beating harder and faster than usual, for example, because you're exercising or you're stressed out, uh, the heart needs more blood. Uh, the muscle is working harder and it needs more oxygen-rich blood. So the flow through those arteries has to increase. But if there's plaque in those arteries gumming up the walls, it, it limits the amount to which the flow can increase because that plaque isn't going anywhere and you can only get so much blood past it at a given time. So when that happens, part of the heart being supplied by that partially blocked artery isn't getting the blood that it needs, and that's when you start to feel symptoms like chest pain or shortness of breath. So the nuclear stress test is looking for this phenomenon where the blood flow to part of the heart can't increase enough during stress, and that part of the heart is getting less blood flow than the rest of the heart, okay? And the way that we do that is using what's called a radioactive tracer. Now, we'll talk about the radioactive part in a minute and what that means for you, but essentially how it works is this. We place an IV, we inject this chemical, this radioactive tracer, into an IV, and it goes to the heart and is captured by the heart. The heart cells that capture this emit a radioactive signal for several hours or even days, depending on the chemical used. And then we can scan the heart and capture those signals and localize them to see is the entire heart emitting the same strength of the radioactive signal or is some of the heart emitting a stronger signal than the rest? And because the signal is proportional to the amount of blood flow that went to the part of the heart, we can say essentially did all parts of the heart get the same amount of flow or did some parts of the heart get less flow than others? And that's the underlying concept on which this relies. Now, just a quick detour to explain the radioactive part, okay? This is a test that requires radiation. The radiation is being produced by the chemical that is injected into your blood. This chart here shows how much radiation is involved. So the nuclear imaging is the bottom five gray bars, okay? And, and most of the time, you're looking at a rest stress, rest stress technetium scan. That's the second gray bar and that's about a 10 or 11 in terms of a dose. Now, when you compare that to other types of scans, you can see that it's a fair amount, okay? So compared to a CAT scan of the chest or abdomen, it's about double, or in some cases, three times as much radiation as that. If you compare it to a chest X-ray, it's hundreds of times more than that. I should point out though, the very first bar on the top is the annual background radiation. So you're getting a dose of about three millisieverts per year just by existing on Earth. Earth has radiation producing you know, chemicals in its core. Okay, so the radiation that you get per year is about three, and this test is about a 10 or 11. So it's about three or four years worth of background radiation um, associated with this test. Now, if you just get one test, that's not such a big risk, right? Every little amount of radiation that you get slightly increases the amount, um, the, the chance of cancer later in life, okay? But one scan, generally we feel if it's indicated, if it's needed to make important decisions about your heart, the cancer risk associated with one scan is very small and is outweighed by the benefits of the information that the scan provides. Now, if you're getting scans repeatedly, every year, every few years, First of all, that's probably not appropriate clinically. And second of all, that radiation will start to add up and the risk of cancer associated with that radiation exposure is not negligible. So anytime you're being uh, told that you need a scan uh, associated with a radiation dose, you should just 
make sure the person ordering the scan knows if you've had multiple such scans in the past because you don't want to get a big cumulative radiation dose. But if it's just one, two scans over the course of your lifetime, it's really a negligible cancer risk. Uh, and if the test is needed, uh, you should go through with it. Okay, so that's kind of what, what I would say about the radiation part. So let's just review real quick uh, how the entire morning will go for you when you have the scan, now that you understand the, the basics of how it all works. Okay, so first, um, at most places, you'll start by getting a rest injection. So they'll place an IV and they'll inject the radioactive tracer, okay? You won't really feel anything. You'll get a break of about 30 to 40 minutes, and then they'll scan your heart to see if the tracer went to all parts of your heart equally at rest. Some cases where it may not go to certain parts of the heart is if you've had a heart attack in the past. That, that heart attack can cause part of the heart muscle to die, and the dead heart muscle isn't going to pick up the tracer like the rest of the heart did. But this at least gives us a baseline to which we can compare the stress pictures. So that's the rest scan, and now the stress test. So you'll have your stress test. Um, that can either be on a treadmill, um, most commonly, or if you're not able to exercise, uh, you can get a medication that is like exercise for the heart. At peak stress, when you're exercising as hard as you possibly can or when that medicine is working um, with the greatest strength, you'll get another injection of the radioactive tracer and that'll again go to the heart. Okay, so now the heart is capturing that tracer under stress conditions and if one of those arteries is blocked, that part of the heart isn't going to capture as much of the tracer as the rest of the heart. Okay, so you get another break uh, just to let the radioactive tracer settle in and so forth uh, and then you'll get scanned again. Okay, during the scan, you'll be connected uh, to a machine like this. This is, these are telemetry leads. Basically, they capture an EKG signal or electrical signal from your heart, and it allows us to time the pictures to the heart's electrical signal. In addition, during the stress test, you'll be wearing these because we'll want to be monitoring the electrical signal from your heart to see if there's any signs of trouble there because uh, a blocked artery can cause changes on the EKG as well. This is what the scanner looks like. It's um, just a bed. You have to just hold still um, for 20, 30 minutes, depending on uh, your body size and uh, the exact type of the scan that was done. Um, do your best to hold still. It's not the most comfortable thing, but I will say that people with claustrophobia generally don't have any problem with this because uh, the tube is, is very shallow, so you don't really feel closed in there, okay? So that's the scan, and then the images will be processed by the computer. So the top row of images here, uh, the one, two, three uh, pictures on the top, let's say that that was your rest scan. This is totally normal, okay? This is showing that the color, the uptake throughout the entire heart was the same. Um, the intensity of the uptake is color-coded. So if you see that orange ring going through the entire heart and it's equally distributed throughout the whole thing, that's normal. In the middle uh, panel, it's cut off at the bottom. That's the base of the heart. And on the right side of the panel, it's cut off on the left side. That's also the base of the heart. That's just where the heart ends. So it's normal not to have any tracer there. Let's say the bottom row of pictures is your stress images. You can see that it doesn't fill in nicely here, right? Those that shape, um, the circle doesn't close in the, in the left-sided image, you don't have that horseshoe shape in the middle. That means that at stress, a significant part of the heart got much less flow uh, than the rest of the heart. And so then we would say there must be a blocked artery here and it must be causing a significant drop in flow during stress. So this would be a, a very abnormal stress test if the top pictures were rest and the bottom pictures were stress. And this would be a case where we would say we probably have to look at those arteries directly, either with a CAT scan of the chest or with a heart catheterization. Um, on the other hand, if it's just mildly abnormal or if the rest and stress pictures look exactly the same, then we would say there's probably no significant blockage, at least not a blockage big enough to compromise blood flow, and we would just manage things medically. Um, I should mention, uh, because I don't think I did earlier, the whole thing uh, can take about three or four hours. Uh, so the test can take up a whole morning, so make sure that you set enough time for that. At some places, they'll just do a stress scan, and if the stress scan looks completely normal, they don't even bother with the rest scan, uh, but most places will do a rest and a stress uh, in every patient. So I hope that that provides a, a good overview of what the day looks like, how this test works, uh, and what we're looking for, and I wish you luck. Thanks.